Nice. Hey, Hickok 45, sporting a Cavour. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I've been uh, wanting to get my hands on one to play with for quite a while, and uh, we had a viewer lend us one, so thought I'd shoot it, give you my impressions of it. No big secrets. It's been out a pretty good while. Uh, all the information's out there on these uh, on this firearm has a really good uh, reputation so far. I think all of us would have to agree, wouldn't we? If you like a bullpup, right? <laughs> As far as bullpups go, it uh, apparently is one of the premier uh, models, if not the premier bullpup you know, rifle in uh, this configuration. So, you know, I'm not sure. I have a hard time with bullpups in a way. I want to like them, but uh, they're hard to like, especially if you're 6'8". Maybe that's it. I don't know. Bugs seem to like it uh, here in the hot uh, weather and humidity. But it's, a, it's an interesting firearm. And this one has uh, an Aimpoint H1 Micro on it. And that's a pretty cool uh, sight. Little red dot. I'll show you. This red dot enables me to hit that red plate, maybe. What did I tell you? Ah, I see a flower pot. Oh, better not get a round on that steel behind it. <laughs> Smoked him. Aimed a little low there to begin with. Got to take into account how high the sight is and how low the bore axis is uh, as compared with the, the sight. You have a fair amount of difference you know on this firearm. Just like even an AR, you know, if you walk right up to a target paper target put the gun up against the paper target <laughs> look through the sight you will not see the hole that you're right because the barrel is uh, lower than the sight uh, experienced shooters well aware that uh, sometimes uh, new shooters don't think about that well, let's take a look at it here for a second it uh, maybe even three seconds first let's clear it mag release you handy right there maybe too handy oops back around that okay so we are definitely clear we see nothing in there Wow, pretty cool gun. Uh, seems to work, seems to work. I've just had it for uh, a little over, I guess a day. And uh, I don't know, shot, I don't know, six or seven magazines through it. It just works. It uh, it cranks out the 223, the 556. I've shot both. We can shoot some of both today. We have, uh, you got the rails, the you know standard uh, like 19 by 13 rails. Uh, and we have mag uh, swivel attachment locations there we have uh, uh, everything pretty much ambi you know ambidextrous you can reverse the safety you can reverse the bolt uh, you don't have to reverse the the bolt catch the release or the uh, the mag release you don't have to reverse <laughs> they're in a good spot you can even reverse the uh, the ejection port uh, one thing about it though and you may already know this i've seen it shot but uh, even if you're shooting uh, if you're if i shoot it from my left position uh, I, I don't get the rounds in my face. It, it throws them out because of the brass deflector. So, so it has solved some of those uh, issues. And that's one of the things that's the most irritating, I think, to a lefty or to anybody if you're moving it back and forth. Uh, because you don't always have time, obviously, to switch it over, particularly in combat. You know, I'm always in combat. And sometimes I like to shoot from the left shoulder and sometimes from this shoulder when my trigger finger gets tired. You know, so if you can just, you can switch back and forth more easily with that. So, in fact, this gun is owned by a lefty. Yeah, and uh, he was so kind as to switch it over for a righty uh, for me. And you see on this side, uh, again, going down, this is a pressure switch for a, uh, uh, an optical or a light, a uh, Metro light or something, I think, that, that some of them either come with or will come with. So they've got that there. Uh, your sling swivel. Uh, this is a, a little place where you have a special key, I think, and you can switch out the barrel. You have to use that and your pin, take down pins, the trigger group, that holds the trigger group in. And uh, this pin holds the bolt. And I'll just show you that real quick. It's really, it takes a long time to break it down now. To get ready, better go get some coffee. Except you need a sharp pointed object. And I don't know if I can find one of those anywhere. Oh, hey, how about one of these? So you just push the pin out here, which is not much problem. You try to find a 5.56 five, round somewhere, and you probably can if you're firing this gun, right? There's the bolt. Okay, assembly. 
pretty cool then you push these out and these are captured pins which is always nice especially in the battlefield you know where I'm usually hanging out right and uh, there's your trigger group and I think you can just kind of reach in there and grab it if you're more coordinated than I am uh, I've just been letting gravity be my friend and it just comes right out the trigger group and uh, one of the things that uh, is a little different with this one is that the, the trigger groups all all the parts are steel and that's a little different from some of the bull pups out there today you have a lot of polymer nothing wrong with polymer but a lot of folks will tell you that uh, you get a better feel more uh, traditional feel with this one Put that back up in there might need that and the bolt uh, is, is pretty simple it's uh I see yeah there's a bolt I will point I'm not going to take it down right now I will tell you one thing uh, when you take that down this pin com comes out and you pull the bolt out and it's kind of typical you know a bolt like a scar 17 or something and then the firing pin back here which is flat on the this is the back of the firing pin you're looking at right there where my finger I bet I can find a pointer again if I can uh, yeah here's a great pointer that's the back of the firing pin just a little tip here especially if you have one of these and you're not taking it apart yet you've not uh, cleaned the bolt of course the bolt doesn't get dirty like an AR because you know it has a, a gas system so it doesn't have to be cleaned that often but that's the back of the firing pin and uh, you want to insert it from from the back the instruction manual says to put it in the bolt and then and spring and then insert all that uh, really tough to do unless you know a trick I don't do and still get that pin in so Put it from the back and you'll and you'll see how it goes in there between these two little cams there so just a little tip there because uh, it tells you in the manual to use a hammer and a pin to, to get that back in if you do it that way you won't need to do that you won't need to hammer on it okay so just a little little tip so we're going to have kind of a torture test today because i think it's about 96 with humidity to match so i think this firearm can probably handle that let's put this back in Probably need that for it to operate properly, just my guess. Okay. Okay. High tech, you know, that's, that's the, the story, isn't it, these days? Polymer, uh, to a lot of traditionalists, you know, guns like this, just, oh my gosh, that is the ugliest thing on the planet. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not long enough to be a rifle. You know, when you compare it with, with this, it's hard to imagine this being traditional now, isn't it? Uh, but you know look at the difference in length and the difference in shape just uh we used to think the ar was really space age this is space age isn't it okay so it's bullpup again beauty is as beauty does if the thing functions and works well you know it shouldn't matter what it looks like you know if it's non-traditional uh, and again by all accounts uh this is very well received and doing well it's proven you know, I'm not gonna run around here in the woods and you know and throw it in the mud and shoot. I mean, the gun's proven. I uh, just want to give you my impressions of it, uh, how I like it, and how it fits in with the bullpups I've shot and that sort of thing. And again, I'm a little uh, biased, maybe a lot, and I'm also six eight, and so that shades my opinion too of these little little firearms like this. But let's just uh, take a couple more shots with it. One of the things about it that's pretty cool is this mag's about empty. Let me see if I can get my self through where I can actually see something. Is uh, changing mags and just the operation of it. If you've had a lot of training, as you would if you were in the IDF, uh, who is using this, of course, they've uh, they're moving from the uh, the M4 to there. There's still some M4s in use, I think, but uh, but you know this is taking over. And it's in an evolutionary stage. There are some things about it, as I understand, that they might be changing the mag release, perhaps. You know, it's really handy to grab it in a way. But uh, for me, I don't know about you, if you've shot one of these, but my other arm, it, it I don't know, it's almost uh, too much in the, too handy. And then I'm also afraid I'm gonna hit it with my wrist accidentally. Now I know that's one way to, to do it intentionally, to release it, maybe while you're grabbing another magazine. But it'd also be easy to hit that, you know, just in a uh, normal course of shooting the firearm, it seems to me. So, so maybe you pull that out, then you put another one in. Let's see, we've got the bolt back, right? Yeah. Let me, let me, uh, well, that's another thing. Let me point out 
But you get the bolt back. How do you get the bolt back? Unless you have an empty magazine in it. Well, uh, not easy, is it? At least I haven't figured out a way. It's too easy. So you pull it back and then lift up on the bolt catch. So it's kind of a, <laughs> an awkward thing to do. So the bolt's back. But let's say I just emptied a magazine. Pow, pow, pow. It's empty. So I reach up here. I can release it a couple of ways. Grab another mag. Put it in. Put the bolt. And there it's ready to go again. So you see the bolt release is right there. So that's pretty handy. You know, you could argue. Works out pretty well as long as you get the mag seated before you, you know, activate it. So anyway, let's take a couple of shots. Let's not bad mouth it too much. It's a pretty cool gun. I wonder if I can hit that watermelon over there. Or that uh, piece of cinder block. Okay, so we're empty. So I'll do it in slow motion since I'm not a uh, combat artist. It just ran dry, so throw the mag out. Grab another one. Put it in. Hit the bolt. We're back in action. I think actually he's putting some holes in it. We'll try the red plate. Yeah, it's easy to shoot well. Feels good. <laughs> really does. Try that watermelon again. He's not going to blow up or anything. Pretty interesting gun. Uh. So like I say, the, uh, the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, this is their, their gun, the Tavor. Uh, it's developing quite a reputation uh, for quality. And uh, I think since the uh, early 2000s, you know, they've been you know, working it in and using it, and uh, it's been evolving. And uh, they've got just about what they want, I think. Although there's newer models, like I say, I think they're they're looking at a model. They've got one where the mag release is up here, more like the traditional uh, AR or something. And uh, it's available with a. Uh, it's going to be available as a nine millimeter uh, drop-in kit, and uh, also a, a five by what forty-five by thirty-nine, uh, you know, drop-in kit, you know, like the AK seventy-four round. And uh, that will be cool. I can imagine how popular that 9mm uh, drop-in kit will be. Because this will be uh, you know, a nifty little gun to have in both 5.56 and 9mm. Uh, it's, it's probably, I guess you could say, you could argue it's more ambidextrous than any of the other bullpups. That's one of the advantages of it. Uh, it just is because you can reverse everything. And many things don't have to be reversed. You got that flash uh, deflector, that brass deflector, which is uh, pretty cool. And it's it's not. Uh, there's some others of these that are really wide, as you know, and and uh, fat. This one's actually rather slim, I guess you could say, for a bullpup. It's odd looking with this handle, but that's all by design. All by design. And it's actually supposed to be utilized. Uh, I don't know one way to grasp it is to you know, actually use that with your arm. And I was doing some of that, and you really do. It does enable you to get a good grip on it. If you put your arm against that and uh, you know get a good good grasp of it, you, you can really lock it in. I have to say, whereas with a normal rifle, you're out there, you know, hanging kind of. Uh, so it it does enable you to get a really nice grasp on it, even though it is a little odd looking. But again, it doesn't matter what something looks like if it, if it works. But like I say, the mag release I think is a disadvantage. I, I don't like I don't like that. Uh, I, I like the fact it's easy to release, but it's a little bit in my way. I don't know about you if you've ever held one of these, what you think about that. But I can see very easily how you know you could uh, you could get against that and and release the magazine maybe when you didn't want to. And then again on the bolt release, that's pretty handy. But uh, you have to make sure you, you hit it at the right time. Uh, 
the other awkward thing about it again is of course uh, if you want to lock the slide back you got some kind of operation here you need to clear or, or whatever it might be locking the slide back is not an easy proposition unless you can figure out a way that I have not figured out okay the only way I figured out is to get it back and release that uh, bolt lock there okay now you got it back so they don't know okay but again uh, by and large it's pretty cool it, uh, it it shoots well it's pretty much designed I think to, to put an optical on a red dot some kind of sight has to flip up sights you know they come with it you know, a little tritium insert on that you got the and we're co-witnessing through this on the on the aim point so you know they're pretty much on the same point of aim it's a little bit off uh, they're not the best flip up sights backup iron sights I've ever seen uh, you might want to if you're going to rely on those exclusively get you some better sights and you know, put them on there but at least you have those that's, that's pretty neat you can also put a rail on the bottom there I uh, wouldn't want that wow it'd be hard for me to grasp although there are lots of ways to hold the gun I mean you could actually grab it right there you know and then if you had a rail needed a rail there with an extra toaster or something hanging on it you know you'd be okay but there's just something about it the weight is is uh, mostly rearward and as ugly as this thing is it, uh, to you if you're trying <laughs> to me a traditionalist and you just don't care for bull pups uh, when you when you shoulder it and, and you know get a hold of it and, and sight it uh, it's it's remarkably easy to keep on target I will say that so if you've never fired one of these things there are some real positives about it I mean it's, it's surprisingly easy to hold on target and part of that is just the weight distribution back here it's just a lot lighter out here and it's it's funny and you know when you've got a red dot sight or a scope it really brings out how much you're moving the sight around and, I, and normally I'm all over the place with a scope on a gun at least it seems to me that I am but I'm over there when I'm on that red plate or on anything that chicken I mean it just it just kind of lays there I, I have to say now again for you real newbies why do we even want a bullpup well I showed you the difference in length of course uh, you know what you have uh, you know basically is the ability to have the same length barrel in a much shorter firearm you know you got a 16 inch barrel just over 16 on both of these firearms so essentially this firearm has everything this one has on it you know same length barrel uh, you know, it's your action, your bolt, you know, your magazine. Well, you got everything. It's just all moved back. That's what makes it a bullpup. And, you know, that's that's a, an amazing difference. And actually, if we look at this, now this is firing condition. I mean, it's not hot, but that's the way you do the length. Here, this, this uh, stock was not even out. So if I'm firing this M4, that's what it's going to look like. And the bullpup, so that's even more of a dramatic difference, isn't it? So quite a difference and quite a different feel that's the attraction you get a full length barrel this comes in a 16 uh, I guess 16 and a half or an 18 and even with an 18 inch barrel you know it's still not very long and you get the the dynamics the effectiveness of the of the round especially in a 556 it really needs velocity you start cut, cutting the barrel off too much with that round and you really lose effectiveness combat effectiveness don't you and so with this, you still got a, an effective uh, length on the barrel. It's a one and seven twist, the quality stuff. You know, it's a cold hammer forged barrel, chrome lined. You know, there's this, you, you know how the, the IDF, they don't adopt anything that's not high quality. Uh, well, I say that as far as I know. When I think of them, I think of uh, Uzis and Galils and just quality uh, uh, firearms. And uh, this is another one in that line. And it apparently still evolving. So let's take just a couple more shots and see if I can think of any more lies to tell you. Now what I was firing, I think most of there was 223. Now this is some uh, 556, actually Portuguese I've had for quite a while. So let's see if the Portuguese ammo will actually fire. This is more of a torture test for the shooter than uh, for the firearm. I'm used to heat and all that and perspiration and as you all know and uh, humidity. And it's pretty pretty extreme today. 
Okay, let me take a couple more of those. Maybe the 5.56 five, will uh, will shoot dramatically different. You think it'll have a dramatically different point of aim? Okay, and you know you got your safety just more like an AR style, and that's kind of nice because some of the bull pups have a big old plastic pin that just push pin, so that's pretty neat. Safe and fire. This one does not have the fun switch. This is you know USA model IWI. Well, put one on the watermelon, put it when he's five, five, six on him. <laughs> kind of fogging up here. Well, I tell you, this makes it so easy to hit that plate. I wonder if I could switch shoulders, put it on safe. See if I could demonstrate. Uh, a little ambi here myself. I've not shot it like this. <laughs> Let's see if it hits me in the chin. Probably will because I'm so big and ugly. All right, now I've got my safety is on the other side. All right. This always feels very awkward. Got him, all right. <laughs> all right, I think it did scratch my, my chin there, else just the heat. But uh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Like I say, you can really unload it quickly, the mag in there, and uh, just grab it. Of course, the FS2000 uh, is the same way. You just pop that button and pull it right out, reload it. Not a problem. You know, we've got a watermelon here we're going to have to shoot, don't we? We've got the 5.56 five, in, a little bit hotter, unless the Portuguese loaded it down. All right, where should I hit it? Oh, i got to aim at the top, that's for sure. <laughs> and I hit it in the top. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I hear it ring. Let's shoot a couple of quick ones into the barrel. Oh, there's a water-filled container that has not been addressed. Oh, well, I didn't do much. Of it. All right. Okay. <laughs> I can't just machine gun it. it it's got about a 12-pound trigger, I think. Uh, let's take that magazine out. So it's not a light trigger, that, that's for sure. From uh, my reading and information, uh, a lot of people really expect there to be more and more uh, accessories come out for this firearm because it's, uh, it's gaining in popularity very, very quickly. Uh, it's compared with uh, other bull pups. You know, this seems to be the one that's really going to be survivor. And uh, so you'll be seeing more things, more drop-in triggers and that kind of thing. You saw how simple the trigger was to drop out and all that. But it's, uh, I think, you notice the bolt's not locked back. Normally I would have the bolt locked back right now. And again, that comes from that awkwardness of getting that done. There we go. Uh, but the, the firearm is very popular. It's proven. Uh, you know, there, there's nothing I can do to... To test it, that's you know going to uh, make a difference in the Travor world, right? It's a very very popular firearm already, and uh, sought after. Uh, it definitely, it runs around a couple thousand, give or take a few hundred, depending on uh, barrel length and what options you have on it. Uh, but it's uh, it's hard to find somebody that's too very uh, critical of it because it has shown that it works and uh, very effective. Uh, at least at this point. It doesn't have decades and decades and decades of history like the you know the AR-15 M4 platform does but it's got a fair amount of time with some hard use you know by real combat people okay <laughs> not goofballs like me on YouTube uh, it has you know real combat people you know in the in the desert you know in some uh, harsh environments and it uh, apparently is doing well. I'm sure there's exceptions and there's probably people that hate it but by and large you're getting good reports I think on it uh, again, I can just give you my impressions, and I kind of like the way it shoots. Uh, that's a nice sight, that, that uh, Aimpoint H1. I have to say that. I'm, I'm not big. I don't have many sights like that, but that one is pretty cool. 
and uh, easy to see. Uh, it, it just it shoots well. It's easy to hit with. Trigger's heavy, but uh, but I, I kind of like it. And uh, does not have a reciprocating bolt. I don't think of anything I didn't uh, point out here about it. Uh, and I think I've pointed out the positives and negatives there as, as I see it, uh, just from my uh, my shooting. And I'm going to shoot it some more, and uh, we'll play with it some more. It's kind of fun. I mean, while I have it, the opportunity to, to shoot it, we're going to shoot at least 50,000 rounds through it, I think. So uh, y'all just bring on the ammo. Life is good.